Up until the 1980s, most cars on the road relied heavily on carburetors to meter out fuel. Carburetors work by drawing in fuel while air is introduced into an engine. This is accomplished by virtue of the Venturi effect. Regulated by the throttle, the flow of air and throttle position determine how much fuel is drawn in. The optimal amount of fuel for the airflow is metered by flow restricting nozzles called jets. Each different type of jet circuit is tuned to the different modes of engine operation. Because of its mechanical characteristics, carburetors lack precision over air fuel mixtures and require tuning to keep them functioning correctly. With the rise of cheaper embedded electronics and stricter efficiency and emissions requirements, electronic fuel injection was quickly adopted by car manufacturers. Fuel injection works by precisely spraying pressurized fuel through computer control injectors. Fuel is sprayed into the intake of the engine just before it enters a cylinder. The computer that meters out fuel is known as an engine control unit, or ECU. The ECU's function is to measure the state of the engine, utilizing sensors and calculating the precise amount of fuel to use, depending on the conditions. Some of the key parameters measured are engine RPM, air temperature, airflow into the engine, throttle position, and engine temperature. Equipped with the accuracy of digital electronics and the flexibility of software, car manufacturers could now tune fuel systems much closer to optimize both power and fuel economy. Because the injected fuel is sprayed at much higher pressures, it atomizes and mixes better with air. It can also be sprayed into the turbulent sections of intake flow, enhancing mixing even further. Better air fuel mixing requires less enrichment overall and improves both fuel economy and power. On most engines, both the fuel injection and ignition systems are merged. This allows the ECU to refine ignition point timing relative to the combustion cycle. Creating a spark earlier in the cycle or advancing the timing can produce more power by starting combustion sooner, which allows more pressure to be produced in combustion, but at the risk of detonation. With an ECU in control of the ignition system, advancing ignition timing when conditions allow for it now become achievable. Another unique benefit of fuel injection is that it allows for use of feedback in the fuel delivery system. During cruising, the leanness of combustion is monitored by an oxygen sensor in the exhaust stream which provides feedback to the ECU. In turn, the ECU can use this data to trim the air-fuel mixture closer to the ideal mixture, boosting fuel economy. This type of monitoring allows adjustments to be made for improving the emissions-reducing properties of catalytic converters. On some fuel injection systems, sensors to detect detonation are also present. These early sensors worked by listening for the acoustical signature of detonation on the engine block. The ability to detect detonation allows manufacturers to tune engines even leaner for improved economy. If detonation is detected, the mixture can be enriched and the ignition timing adjusted to reduce the detonation. With accurate electronic fuel control becoming common, the next step to increasing fuel economy was to look at the combustion process itself. When a piston compresses an air fuel mixture, it extracts energy directly from its expansion as it burns. If the compression of the mixture is increased, the efficiency of extracting energy from the expansion of the hot gases increases. Because more energy is converted into mechanical force, less heat is wasted, lowering exhaust temperatures. The amount an engine compresses the air fuel mixture is known as its compression ratio, and manufacturers have been slowly edging this number higher. But this higher efficiency comes with an increased risk of detonation. This can be reduced by designing the spray of fuel and combustion chamber elements to mediate chamber temperatures. In some cases of high compression engines, manufacturers recommend higher octane rated fuels, which reduce the risk of detonation. Detonation detection also prevents damage from detonation when fuel quality is poor or operating conditions worsen. The next area of refinement started occurring around the early 1990s when some manufacturers started to enhance their valve trains. When gases enter or leave an engine, it passes through a valve. Intake valves are open to draw in fresh air fuel mixture 
while the exhaust valve opens to push out spent gases. For a brief period during the combustion cycle, both valves are open to allow for the inrushing intake mixture to push out spent gases. This ensured a fresh charge of air for combustion. As an engine revs up, aggressive valve openings with greater overlap improve power. But this comes at the cost of some unused fuel being flushed out into the exhaust. When efficiency is the goal, under light throttle loads, excessive valve opening can slow the velocity of the intake charge. Too much overlap under light load can cause spent gases to get trapped in the chamber or even find their way through the intake valve. For this mode of operation, a less aggressive valve opening with far less overlap is needed. The problem arises in how valves are actuated. An engine uses a camshaft with lobes that push on the valves to open them. In its simplest form, the aggressiveness and timing of camshafts are fixed to the design of an engine. Designers were forced to design a single profile for valve operation. That is a compromise between high RPM power and low RPM economy. In an effort to tune valve timing more effectively for the two opposing requirements, adjustable valve trains were developed. In variable valve timing, only one set of cams exist, but their timing can be advanced or retarded, similar to ignition timing. This allows the ECU to dynamically adjust when the cams open or close valves, in effect controlling overlap with software. This allowed manufacturers to highly tune in valve train characteristics to their respective modes of operations, creating more power or better fuel economy when needed. Increasing the number of valves per cylinder also became more popular. With more than two valves per cylinder, airflow becomes better at high RPM, increasing the effectiveness of valve overlapping. The increased surface area of multiple valves also helps with cylinder cooling, helping reduce detonation. Multiple smaller valves also reduce the mass of valve train components. Toward the end of the 1990s, ECUs were becoming very sophisticated, and manufacturers were using them effectively to remove efficiency bottlenecks. But the biggest one yet to be addressed was the human controlling the engine. Electronic throttle control, or drive-by-wire, remove direct throttling of the engine from the driver and replaces the gas pedal with a sensor. The ECU interprets the driver's intent and then throttles the engine electronically, factoring in the current state of the engine. Because the ECU has the final say on the throttle position, it can adjust all available engine parameters to best achieve power or fuel economy directly, as opposed to responding to the changes in airflow caused by direct throttling. Because of the responsive and dynamic nature of electronic throttle control, it can be programmed to emulate a throttle response that isn't natural to the engine. This can make a smaller, efficient engine feel more powerful to the driver. By the mid-2000s, fuel injection systems evolved as new technologies would further enhance the precision of fuel delivery. The industry started to transition to gasoline direct injection. In gasoline direct injection, the fuel is injected at extremely high pressures directly into the combustion chamber. The higher pressures created better atomization, but this also offered a new level of control that dramatically improved power by allowing fuel to be added strategically during phases of combustion, sometimes in multiple instances. Less fuel was also wasted during enrichment because of this precise control. On the fuel economy end of the spectrum, gasoline direct injection was a major breakthrough giving manufacturers the ability to burn ultra-lean mixtures. This worked by cocooning the injected fuel in air near the spark plug. The air-fuel mixing occurs by the swirling of the injected fuel. Because the mixture is insulated from the heat of the cylinder walls, the chances of detonation are dramatically reduced. Ultra-lean burning also has the added benefit of lowering combustion temperatures and reduced emissions. These new fuel delivery techniques created by gasoline direct injection would have been impossible to accomplish with traditional fuel injection or carburetors. More advanced ignition systems were also becoming commonplace. Ignition coils that generate the high voltage electricity for spark plugs were being mounted directly to them. This allowed for finer ignition adjustments, higher spark voltage, and larger spark sizes. 
Detecting detonation also saw an evolution in the form of ionic sensing ignitions. Because spark plugs are right in the middle of the combustion process, it can be used to monitor the combustion process itself. In ionic detonation sensing, the ECU uses the spark plug as a sensor to sample the ionization of each cylinder after each combustion to directly detect the signature of even tiny amounts of detonation. This allows the ECU to edge fuel delivery and ignition timing even closer to ideals, making the engine more efficient overall. With the current high fidelity of combustion control and old technologies not being revisited for the purposes of better fuel economy, turbochargers are devices that capture the energy from engine exhaust through a turbine to power an air compressor. The compressed air is then fed into the engine. Since it's forcing more air into the engine than atmospheric pressure alone would allow, the engine can generate more power. Turbochargers have been used on vehicles for decades in order to increase their power. But with electronic throttle control and more sophisticated ECUs, they're used in conjunction with small efficient engines to modify their performance characteristics. The ECU simulates the feel of a large engine by manipulating turbo-generated compressed air called boost. The response of the power delivery is electronically adjusted so it matches the throttle response in a manner intuitive to the driver. Boost pressure can also be used to reinforce the lower RPM torque of these smaller engines, increasing their overall efficiency. This is all done seamlessly under ECU control, effectively masking the turbocharger's presence. When light throttle, fuel efficient driving occurs, no boost is created and the natural efficiency of the smaller engine dominates. In effect, turbochargers allow small engines to both feel like and produce the power of a large engine, but without the fuel economy penalty. Manufacturers have also experimented with less popular technologies that boost engine efficiency. Some examples of these are deactivating cylinders, deactivating valves, and multi-spark cylinders. While some ideas have been more successful than others, overall engine efficiency has come a long way in the last 30 years. However, with the emergence of hybrid engine technologies and our current transition into fully electric vehicles, the next 20 years of automotive technology may be the last decades of fuel being a factor in engine efficiency.